Hey there, welcome to the Art We Make video series. Today I will be teaching you how to use a rock for a loom and how to weave it. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, so now we're making a rock as a loom. And I think these are really neat a way to make a, a cool paperweight. You could use this and an altar just as a way to, to make tiny textiles that you would um, incorporate into something else. But what's so cool about it, I think, is just that you're kind of marrying the hard and the soft in this piece. To get started, we're going to use a flat-ish rock. This is cotton rug warp. I'm going to get started tying it to itself on the back. All right, and then I got another trick for securing warp. You're gonna go up, just wrapping it around. So I'll show you the back side looks kind of like the front side. Okay, we're gonna say that's good. It's plenty for now. You can make these as elaborate as you want. All right, before I tie a knot, I'm gonna use happy, my happy helper, blue painter's tape. I'm just gonna secure it that way. You can remove it when you're done. <laughs> I think I need my needle to help me. Okay. So this is just going to help tighten that up. Okay, and then you can trim. And I'm going to add another piece of our painter's tape up here, just to keep things from wandering. Okay, so here is our loom, our rock loom with warp. And they'll, we can kind of manipulate them a little bit. I like to use variegated threads that are about the same thickness as the warp. This is a tapestry needle. Again, I think I'm just going to cut off a random, get that piece out of there, a random length. And I'm gonna start about an inch from the bottom of the loom. And I'd probably go up about an inch or so from the top to finish. I'm going to start by going under, then over, under, over, oh, under, over, and under. So it's nice to have a nice, tap strong tapestry needle to help scrape against those rocks. And I'm going to pull this. And I'm going to let my tail just hang. I'm going to leave it about that much. And at the end, I'll weave it in. Okay, so that was my first row. This is plain weave, which just means over, under, over, under. And I'm going to weave back, making sure that I'm going over, since I had just come under my end to make sure it's secure. Otherwise, if you do the same action on an end, you will unweave it. We don't want to do that. We want to go forward. Ah. And right now it's easy. I'm just pulling. Looks like I pierced that one actually, but it's okay. Um, I'm just pulling the weft down. You can use the needle to help you. Uh, again, on the end, I'm going under to make sure I'm not unweaving. Down. With this loom, it's easy to uh, start pinching the sides, and then that would create a, uh, like a bowing of effect where it would get skinnier in the middle as you progress up. So when you're pulling your thread, just make sure it's kind of a gentle pull and leaving kind of an arch something like this as you pull it down will prevent it from getting tugged too skinny and going in like this. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going and then when I get a little bit farther along, I'll show you a technique where you can start weaving, it, when you will start weaving holes. Okay, so, one of the things I think about with weaving is time. 
I mean, A, it takes a lot of time, especially if you're threading a, a traditional loom and you have to wind your warp and thread it bit by bit. It really does take a lot of time, but then once you are at the loom and you begin to weave, you are processing this warp start to finish it feels like a timeline and like a record of your time weaving so if you think about this being the beginning of this project and this being the end and right now you're you're wherever you're at you're at the present and you can't go back I mean you can you could unweave like Penelope in the Odyssey you could go back and unweave um, your your weaving but if you were just to leave it go especially on a traditional loom it's you would be taking a lot of unwinding and and also on a, a traditional loom you start to lose you wind up what you you've already woven so you don't see this happening anymore so you kind of forget what you started you forget what your piece looked like at the beginning so um thinking about time if you're going to be doing this project it's a good thing to meditate on as you're working on it and these little lines these skinny lines are just like you know the hours in a day stacking on to one another to form a representation of the time that you spent but something that you can do with this with weaving is you could if you wanted to make a hole in your piece. You could do that by deciding where you want your hole to be and then weaving just one section of it at a time. So I'm going to weave this right section and just ignoring that other side right now. Maybe we're making a, a wormhole <laughs> in the space-time continuum right here. All right, I think this is as far as it's going to go on that guy. I'm going to just sort of weave this back in. I could get more thread and continue this way and make you can make your hole as big as you want your worm hole <laughs> I'm gonna make this one pretty small just in the interest in, of, of time with this video so I'm gonna hop over to this side and grab some more yarn okay so I'm going to actually start on the left let's see because I want my end. I'm going to thread my end in later. Again, leaving a tail about like that. And so I'm, I wove under, over, under, and I'm going to leave my space for the hole, for a wormhole. Then over, under, over. There's only three ends over here, so this, this is going to be interesting probably. You want at least four. But we'll see if it works. Again, careful not to pinch this weft, unless that's a look that you're looking, you, you know, that would be fine if that's what you're after. And over, under. And I didn't count, I didn't count how many rows I went up. So I'm just gonna eyeball it with the other side. Call that a day with this one. Well, I guess I have to go back. I think I'm gonna go back one more time before we bridge bridge the gap here. Okay, so this would be now I'm gonna go all the way across and leave our little hole. to 
help bring it down. Scissors keep wanting to get involved. Okay, let's see, keep pulling. So when you have a variegated string like this, it's just lovely to see where the light parts match up. It creates its own story, its own drama. I like when things are just left to their own. I'm not making a decision about that. It's just lining up how it lines up. Kind of like how things just happen in our lives. I like this little wormhole. It's like a tiny little window. If you had a really cool, interesting feature on your rock, maybe you'd want to design your hole around to show to, to spotlight that. Okay, so I'm just going to keep weaving until I finish this. Okay, I'm at the end. I'm going to weave about halfway across my piece, and then I think I'm just going to try to tuck that end in a little bit into the piece itself and then snip snip it free careful careful not to cut the hard work that you just did and the same with these guys i'm going to weave them back in there's something so elegant and beautiful about this project um, that i really really love super great for for meditation i hope you enjoyed it thanks Thank you for watching the Art We Make video series. I hope you enjoyed your weaving tutorial. Let me know how it goes if you decide to make the project. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you.